Hi, I'm James Foley. I'm an author and illustrator, and I've got a book called Chickensaurus, which is about chickens being turned into dinosaurs. And today I'm going to show you how to draw the big bad uh, granddaddy dinosaur of them all, the Chickensaurus Rex, uh, which of course is a cross between a chicken and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So let's get started. Okay, cool. So um, we start with the rough body shapes. Let's start with um, a, a rectangle shape for the head. Um, the neck of a T-Rex is really quite um, thick and strong. So we'll have that here and then we'll have the body. I'm going to simplify it to turn it into a kind of a semicircle shape. Now already we're running out of space on this square so I'm going to move this across. We need some room for the tail. And just to save space we will curl the tail around just so it fits in this uh, in this page that I have here. I'm drawing on an iPad in case you're wondering um, which is lots of fun. I'm using an app called Procreate but you can totally use pencil and paper for this that's not a problem at all. Okay now this shape here this is the, the drumstick of a chicken saurus. Um, it's kind of a um, kind of a circle shape here and then we are going to draw kind of a weird shape on the leg. The leg folds back uh, and then goes straight down and then the, the foot comes out here. Okay, so that's, that's the leg shape. And then another one here. I don't know how to describe those shapes. They're kind of weird. I guess it's almost like there's a, like a rectangle there and then the claws all come out the front. Uh, and then you join it up to the circle like so. It's an odd sort of shape. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's useful for lots and lots of different types of animals. Like that's the shape of a dog leg. Um, and big cats have legs that shape. And it's similar to um, the weird shape of horses' legs as well. So to pay attention to horses' legs when you're drawing, um, or any animal's legs when you're drawing, it helps you to get them looking kind of realistic. Okay, let's put in the little um, T-Rex arms, little chicken wings. Um, and that's that's kind of the basic shapes here. We're going to add a little bit more though. We're going to refine um, the shape of the uh, the head here because it's, it's a little bit of an odd shape. We've actually got um, a crest here for the eyeball. And then the head comes to a a point um, which is not it's not halfway down the rectangle it's a little bit lower than halfway down where that point joins up if you can see um, and we can now put in the um, the chin and now we can put in the beak so we're going to start here and we're going to sketch in where the beak goes now a T-Rex mouth, it's not straight. I mean, you could draw it straight, but to make it a little more accurate, um, we need to put in a little more detail. So what we do is <coughs> we actually start by curling upwards and then we curl down and then we go upwards again. It's this weird wiggly wobbly shape. So I'll show you again. So we start by going upwards a little bit on a little curve and then we go down and we go down for a big curve. And then we fold up, we join up to the edge of the beak there and then we can curl up for a nasty little smile. Um, okay, let's put a big nostril here on the front of the beak. And the chicken saurus rex has a big crest like a chicken. So we can go up like this, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Something like that. We can curve this back a little bit too. Okay, we've got all the basic shapes. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make that head a bit smaller. My apologies. If you've drawn it big, that's okay. You can just make it like a bubble head T-Rex. Um, other than that, I think we're mostly okay. I think that'll work. Okay, great. Let's go over the top. Um, let's put in the eyeball. And the beak. 
and we've got this shape already, and then we can start to put in some teeth. Now we've got some little teeth here. When the teeth get bigger as they come down here, Now there's a couple of extra lines we can add on the face here. There is a big sort of um, bag under the eye. Um, it's in this big recess. And then there's this funny shape um, on the side of her head up here. It's this double curl like this. It's kind of just bits of the skull that bump out, that stick out. Um, and then we can copy that shape again. It almost looks like a backwards B there. It's just part of the bones um, in in the head, and it kind of helps to get those sort of shapes in there to make it look accurate, like a T Rex. Now, the Chicken Saurus Rex in the book, um, it has some little chickeny details, so it does have one of these little um, red curly bits that chicken have on their necks, and it does have the big dangly bits that chicken have on their necks too. So there's two of these guys in the front. And it also has a metal collar around its neck, which is the control collar. Because um, these chicken saws belong to Sally Tinker's nemesis, Dexter Maelstrom, and he's using the control collars um, to to keep the the T Rexes and all the other chicken saws um, under control to stop them getting loose, to stop them eating anybody. But then at one point in the book, um, the chicken saws do get loose, and it turns out that someone is controlling them using those control collars. Uh, and Dexter says it's not him, but, you know, who knows? Let's put some feathery shapes on here. The, the chicken saw body is going to be all covered in feathers. Um, and it breaks there, the tail sticks out, doesn't have any feathers on it. We can make this bend of the leg uh, all feathery as well, and then we can have some feathers ending there so the leg can stick out. Let's put the feathers going behind that arm and a few more feathers on this side as well. Uh, and when we draw this little arm here, let's put a clump of feathers there for the arm to stick out of. And then we can put the claws on there. And let's have some feathers on the arm too. Little tiny wings. It's not going to fly though. Um, okay, we've got a bunch of bumps down the tail. Um, we'll put them on first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we can draw the tail. Drawing a curving tail can be a little tricky to get the bumps um, working together, but if you check it out, I, I could have drawn this guideline to start with, but I didn't. You can draw a guideline showing where the top of the tail is going to be, and then you can put all of your bumps of the tail on that guideline. But I've drawn this character a bunch of times, so I didn't need to draw that guideline, but you might like to do that yourself. Now, we can use another line for the underside of the tail here, so that you'd see the underside of the tail here, but then when the tail curls, you're not going to see it anymore, but then you will see it again over here. Drawing something like that is really helpful. It helps to make the tail look a bit 3D. Okay, let's make these um, legs look really chickeny. I'm actually going to make these legs a bit longer. So we've got space for big um, chicken toes. Okay, well there's three uh, toes. Um, there is actually four, but you can't see the fourth one on this on this one. You can see it here though. It's up a little bit higher on the inside edge. Okay, cool. And let's make these claws really big and nasty. And what we can do as well to make these look really extra chickeny is to put some wrinkly lines going up the legs and up the toes. So that's that's the outlines of our Chicken Saurus Rex. Okay, let's um, add some colour to this guy. I'm going to make a new layer because um, I can do that in uh, Procreate. And the skin of this dinosaur is um, 
at least in my book and on the cover and everything, is a deep red colour. I'm going to change my brush. Let's put this chicken sauce red on. Deep red colour like this is really handy to make a character look dangerous because we know that things that are red like this are usually um, usually things we've got to watch out for. This this red is the colour of stop signs. It's the colour of traffic lights when we have to stop. It's the colour of blood as well. Um, this is a colour that makes us sit up and take notice. I mean, it's also kind of the colour of tomato sauce, but tomato sauce is not generally dangerous. Um, uh, so it doesn't always work. It doesn't always mean something dangerous, but a lot of the time it does. Let's put the red on the um, arms here as well. Now you notice I've used a dark sort of red here. We're going to use a brighter, lighter, more more sort of fresh tomato red here for the crest. For a bit of variety and for this bit here on the neck and for these little dangly whatever they're called bits as well. Uh, and we're going to use a dark, uh, a darker, darker red for the bumps on the tail. And for the claws, I might even make that a little bit darker. And use that for the claws. So it, it almost kind of looks like a, a black, but it's just like a really dark red. Um, and let's have let's have a lighter red for the underbelly of the tail. I can't remember what colour I made it there. But that's right, that works. And we can use similar red for the, the neck here as well. And let's grab a yellow for the beak. There we go. Now I've just gone straight over the teeth because I can then um, erase them out again. But you might, if you're colouring with coloured pencils, you might want to go neatly around it and leave them, leave the white of your paper showing through. Let's get a middle sort of grey colour for the um, control collar. Let's get, let's make the eye yellow as well. Let's make the, the body is actually pink. It's kind of a light, uh, very, very light pink. Which makes it look really silly. Because while things that are a deep red are usually very dangerous, things that are pink are not usually very dangerous. Not when they're, you know, characters in stories. Unless it's like a zombie marshmallow or something. Um, or a, a vampire unicorn or something. Uh, usually, usually monsters are not shown as pink. So making one pink can be quite fun. Let's grab uh, a kind of a reddy colour again and we can have some sort of feathery um, shapes in here. Some feather details. A bit of pattern. It would probably have a lot deeper voice than that. Probably something more like that. You see, I'm an, I'm an expert in uh, chicken saw vocalizations. Um, and an orange for the legs. This is truly one of the most ridiculous characters I have had the pleasure of designing and drawing. It's been so much fun. Okay, um, because I'm on an iPad, I can do a couple of little tricky things. Um, if you've got an eraser for coloured pencils, and you can do some of this stuff too, I am going to shade in uh, some reflections on the on the beak. I'm actually going to get a fuzzier one. There we go. You can really fade that reflection in. Um, that's possibly too much. I might just add some colour back in. Yeah. There we go and let's add some shading to this character too. 
to make him look kind of 3D. I'm going to pick a brown. Um, here we go. Oh. Yeah. Make that less bright, less dark. There we go. Some shadow underneath there, some shadow on here, some shadow under here, definitely. Uh, some shadow in there, some shadow under the chin, some shading under the neck and underneath the control collar, some shading for these guys, um, some shading under the wings, some shading under its bottom. If you had one of these in the backyard, you would get some amazing eggs for breakfast. Just saying, you know, if it wasn't for all the danger um, that they would pose by being a domestic pet, they would be um, amazing layers. Although, if one of these roared a cockadoodle-doo every morning, um, it's probably not the most relaxing way for you to wake up. I can't imagine that hearing that every morning would uh, make you feel rested and ready for the day. Um, let's yeah, just add a bit more shading there. And that's that's our Chickensaurus Rex. I'm going to put the tiniest little highlight in its eye as well. Come on, eraser. The eraser's not working. Ah, oh, because I'm on the wrong layer. Silly. There you go. And uh, probably we should do this too. Um, some scale details. What I'm going to do, um, just to save your ears, because if I go dot, 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 pressing little dots all over this iPad screen, it's going to make a lot of noise. Um, so I'm going to put in some flicky colors like this for the scales. And it's gone into some areas I don't want it to go to, like on the eye. That's okay, because I can just come in and I can just erase the bits that I don't need. On the beak, we can get rid of those bits. On the feathers, we can get rid of those bits. On the bottom there. We'll put a little bit on the arms as well. But if you've got pencil and paper, you can go dot, 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 and you can draw some little, put some little dots or some circles for the scales on your Chickensaurus Rex. Great! Final thing is um, some ground. Let's put um, a lovely paddock underneath it. Lots of room to roam. Oh, I'm still on flicks. Um, this could be a free-range Chickensaurus. one's very happy. Lots of room to frolic in the meadow. Lots of fresh meat for it to chase. Excellent. We'll grab an easy brush again and we'll put on red and we can label this guy chicken source rex from my book Chicken Saurus, which is out September 29, 2020, and may even already be out when I publish this video. So, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed drawing that guy along with me, um, and I hope you get a chance to read the book. Bye -bye.